everything's about. That's why we do it, right? <laughs> Build weapons and skyscrapers and Coriolis mass flow meters. Have you seen Coriolis mass flow meters? <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Sex means babies. And babies need work. And that's where engineering comes in. <laughs> carbon polymers for our diapers, injection molding for our plastic toys, and carbon fiber for our high performance baby carriages. <laughs> about sex and engineering gets me thinking about war. Let me explain. <laughs> there are too many babies. In our effort to save the world, we've bumped up the carrying capacity and made a lot more babies possible. Babies take up space. They consume food and burn our fuel when we take super absorbent polymers for our diapers. <laughs> there are too many babies and too few resources. Exponential growth has wrapped its roots around our planet, entangling and strangling the life from once fertile Earth. So, what do we do? We can't kill babies. <laughs> they're cute, besides they're innocent. So, instead we kill 18 year olds, because they can carry and shoot a gun, and that means they're okay. It seems sometimes that half the stuff around me was created by somebody who was really just trying to figure out how to kill someone better, faster, cleaner. I'm happy to discover that since it's a fun play. <laughs> Plastics, communication, commercial aviation, brought to you by World War II. Can I have my cake and eat it too? My, can I have my jetliners without bombers, my cell phone without IEDs? Sometimes when I tell people I'm an engineering major, I'm surprised that they don't know I'm a terror. We need engineers, they tell us. What happens when you run out of oil? Will we have engineers ready to defend us from the barbarian hordes? Or will we have engineers? weaponry so we can invade other countries, keep prices low, and soak with long, hot showers that we don't need. With chimpanzees, we share three main things that decide their DNA. <laughs> Tools, sex, and warfare. Engineering is in our blood. The need to create and use tools and solve problems is a legacy we carry with us across generations. And if you're looking for survival as a species, sex is pretty unavoidable. Which leaves me wondering about war. Bands of chimpanzees will raid and kill, expanding their territory and resources. The parallels to human behavior are pretty clear. Cool here. I've watched videos of these raids, fixated not by the brutality or the entrancing British voiceover, <laughs> but by the implications. As I watch our shorter, hairier brethren claw and beat and stomp each other senseless, I can't help but wonder if war, too, is in our blood. But then I remember the bonobos who resolve disputes through sexual contact. Conflicts <laughs> with benefits. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just about producing offspring that survive long enough to reproduce. The rest is just elaboration. But as I look down and see my fingers just in circles on the worn path, soft tail spin, my fingers walking step by step, each vertebra drawing smooth lines of muscle. It's all just pretty natural operation. Except when people fight duels over it, or lace each to Croy over it, or erect giant phallic monuments to show how great theirs is. Their love. <laughs> <laughs> We're told to make love, not war. But each food consuming, diaper using, minivan riding baby produced from loving my neighbor one night too many. Was <laughs> 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 18. Old enough to carry and shoot a gun. Eventually, I get tired of thinking about sex and war. And with nothing left to do, I go back to work. Installing wheels on my high performance carbon fiber 